Hello again and welcome. It's Debbie from acrylicpouring.com. Now, just now I created something that I think is really awesome. I can't move it because it's wet and I'm so afraid to put my fingers in it. But um, I'm going to put a few pictures in the blog article. So underneath this video, if you click the little arrow, you'll get various options. Um, one of them is to see the description. And in the description, I'll give a, a link to the blog article where you can pop on over and see this this beautiful tile that I created. So I spend a lot of time in the studio mucking around with paints, painting things and of course I don't video everything that I do so I was just playing around a little bit and putting some colours together, did a swipe and wow it blew me away and I was thinking why do we swipe with black or white? Do we need black or white at all? Why can't we just put colours together? So I thought right I'm going to put some colours, so I just layered some colours on a tile, swiped them and wow. So now hop on over to the blog and see that original one and obviously what I'm going to try and do is recreate it which you know this type of uh, art that we we do trying to recreate anything it really doesn't work very well but anyway I'm going to try so let me just clear a little bit of space here because I don't think my camera is showing the whole canvas and then I'm going to come back and we'll make a start okay I think that's better I've been um, having a session and my entire desk is just full of paintings that are drying so I don't have a lot of space so let's see how we go okay so what I created were just stripes of color so I'm going to do exactly the same and let's see if I can create something that looks good so a bit of orange these are all pre-mixed uh, I like to keep my the colors that I use most often or the the most popular colors I just keep them in these squeezy bottles makes them easy to easy to use. So I'm just going to put some stripes. I've only got four colours, that was all I did before and it still came out looking lovely so I'm going to do exactly the same again. I didn't even um, butt the stripes up together so I, I even left gaps between them and it still came out really good. So I think it's another another lesson I learned there that you know I'm probably when I'm doing my swipes, I know that I am. I'm using too much paint. There's absolutely no need to use as much as I do most of the time. Because when you swipe, obviously you move the paint around a lot. Whoop, not that much. And it, um, you know, all moves around, squirts together, fills in any gaps and things that you've got. So I'm not even gonna bother too much about doing it fancy because the one I just did I can assure you it was not fancy at all. It was not even as neat as this one. I just threw it together and it worked beautifully. So, of course, sod's law, I'll do exactly the same and it will turn out completely different and nowhere near as nice. But anyway, I'm going to try. So, that was all I did, basically. Just layered four colours together, like that. No white, no black, and then swiped them. Oh, let's put that little bit more in frame. I've got these um, like paint chip cards from the DIY store and that was all I used. Now this one's a little bit bigger than what I was doing before so I'm going to need to keep wiping my card but let's just make a start. And that was basically it. That was all I did. I didn't do anything special, nothing fancy. I even left some areas that you can see here where I didn't completely swipe over them. I just left, you know, blank areas and I thought it looked good. I actually got a little gap in the paint just there. I'm just gonna dab it with a brush. That'll take care of it. It's the only gap I can see. I've certainly got plenty because it's come off the end. I was spraying my table as I was going. And look how nice that looks. Um, actually, I, I don't see it looking very good in the camera, but under, but here where I am with the light shining on it, it's absolutely luminous, really, really nice. So now I just want to go around and touch up a few little bits. I've swept a little bit too much there, made my orange a bit thin. So I'm just going to pop a little bit of paint here and then I can fill in the edges of this board. And I'm also hoping, I've given this board um, a couple of coats of gesso and I've also painted a, a big thick gesso cross on the back because I'm desperately trying to stop these boards from warping. 
I guess they're just not designed for the amount of paint that we're throwing on them when we're doing the acrylic pouring. If you're doing just a regular painting, I guess they're fine. But of course we use a lot more um, volume of paint. Our paint's a lot thicker, a lot wetter. We've added more water too. So um, the boards just suck that up. And then as they dry, it contracts because they, um, they don't dry evenly, of course. You know, the outsides dry before the center and it all uh, causes the boards to warp. So there we go, I've just touched up that edge with the orange there. I may need to just come back and do the corners again when it's dry because I've made the paint deliberately quite a little bit runnier today. Okay, that's good. A little bit over on that corner. So now I have to decide what to do. I mean, do I um, want to torch this or I just quite happy with it how it is? What I really like is the, the stripes, the, you know, the little tendrils of paint coming through. To me, it almost looks a little bit like um, rain on a window, as if it's like a dirty window and we've got rain coming down through. So I like that. I will try giving it a torch and see if I can bring out anything else. But on the one I did, it was almost exactly the same. Just the orange came through um, and I didn't really get a lot of other cells. So we'll torch it and see what happens. Now that's interesting because I did get more cells this time than I did on my original one. But look, see how they're in patches here, here and here. And then this patch here, as much as I torched, it wasn't creating any cells. So again, that's really interesting because it's exactly the same paint. You saw me do exactly the same um, procedures. And yet this, this section here, I'll try it again, but it wouldn't produce any cells. There's a bit going on there now. I'm sometimes, because my torch is so fierce, I'm a little bit um, reluctant to get too close to the paint sometimes. So now I just need to go and touch up these edges. Luckily I've got plenty of um, cast off at the bottom here. And a lot of these edges, they're just um, this bottom color, just this plain red. So that makes it nice and easy to touch up. Just a little bit there. Anyway, it hasn't come out exactly the same as the, the one that I created on the towel just now, but it's pretty damned close and I still think it's pretty damned gorgeous. So it just goes to show, if you want to swipe, break the rules. You know, I was thinking, well, why do I need to swipe with black or white? Um, do I need those colours at all? Can I just go for it without any colours? Gave it a try and I was just absolutely blown away and delighted by what I made. The, the bright colours, the contrast between the colours, the little drips, you know, the way it seems to be dripping down the window there, absolutely my style. So I'm just going to finish touching up these edges and then I'll bring you in closer and we'll take a good look um, and see some of these details. So there we go, that's what it looks like. Very bright, very colourful, absolutely gorgeous. I'm really, really loving it. A little bit of glare from the light, sorry about that. If we go in and take a look at some of the details, this is a, a nice part just here. Now the colours are all kind of just dribbling into each other. I really, really like that. That's what attracted to me um, to this when I first did this, you know, just accidental practice piece almost. Lots of other beautiful cell details where all the colours mix in together. So this is definitely a technique that I think you should try. If you've just been swiping with black and white up until now, probably mostly white, then give it a try without using any colours at all other than the colours that you actually want to paint with and you could create a nice colourful effect like this one. So I'm hoping that this um, canvas panel is going to behave, fingers crossed, because it's just phenomenal as it is. So I'm going to be in here checking it every five minutes and I will report back, hang on and I'll show you what the picture looks like when it's all dried and finished. Well, here's the painting the next morning. I did have some slight 
warping of the panel just a little bit but it didn't actually it must have happened later on because it didn't really as far as I can see cause too much problem with the paint but what I did see straight away which I hadn't even thought about and it's just driving me a little bit crazy now you see this line here there's a like a line where I have transparent paints up at the top. So at the top here, I used orange, then yellow. My next color was blue. The orange and yellow are transparent and the blue isn't. And so what it's left is a line just here where you can see where the, the, um, the paints overlap each other. Can you see that maybe in this direction? It's very plain to me here. I'm not seeing it very much in the screen on the camera. Oh yeah, maybe, maybe there. So you can see where there's much more of a, a distinct line than I was hoping for. I was hoping that obviously, you know, there'd be more of a progression like there are in these other areas of the painting. So overall, I still think it looks absolutely fabulous. I'm loving the colours. I'm loving the, the way it's like, you know, dribbled down like rain on a window. It's lovely. But this distinct line here across the top is kind of bugging me a little bit. So I'm going to put this to one side. I'm not sure if I'm going to keep it and varnish it or not. I'd be really interested to know what you think. Does it look okay like this? You know, do, do you think somebody would potentially like it or buy it? Or is this just too much of an error here and I should scrap the whole thing and do it again? Because from here down, I love it. And then there's just this little line here which is bugging me. So please leave me your suggestions in the comments. Is there any way to fix it? Any way you think I can change it or improve it? Or do you think it's just fine as it is and we should all stop criticizing our own work and being so full of doubt? So I'm gonna put it to one side. You let me know what you think. I'll zoom in now and show you just some close-ups of what it looks like when it's dry and finished. So here's the painting. And here's this more distinct line. You see the line where the colour changes from the um, transparent orange and yellow through to where the blue was underneath. So I'm just wondering if I can fix that. But otherwise, throughout the rest of the painting, wow, absolutely glorious. I really love it. Really, really love the colours. Love the way they've all worked in together. I love this kind of streaking just here, like um, wet, you know, rain coming down a window. There's a lot more of that on this side of the canvas too really nice. So let me know what you think of this technique and what you think of this finished painting um, in the comments. Thanks very much for watching.